Namā Om Vishnu Pādāya, Krishnā Prēstāvu, Talēšīm, te bhakti vikāša, svāmin i te namine. Namā Om Vishnu Pādāya, Krishnā Prēstāvu, Talēšīm, te bhakti vedānta, svāmin i te namine. Namaste, Sarasvate Deve, Gauravāni Prachārine, Nirvišeš, Šunyavādi, Pāšatya Dešatārine. Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityānanda, Shirveta Gadhādar, Shivāsādi, Gaur Bhakta Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare Krishna. Welcome you all for this Brahma Samhita discussions. We are at the Shloka 59 and we'll just immediately start with chanting the Shloka and reading the purports. Okay, this is the text 59. Prabhudhe Jnana Bhakti Bhyam Atman Yananda Chinmai. Oh, this is yesterday's shlok, sorry. 58, 59. Pramana is tad sadachara is tadabhyasayad nirantaram. Hodayan atman atmanam. Bhaktim apyuttamam labhed. Here, translation says The highest devotion is attained by slow degrees by the method of constant endeavor for self-realization with the help of scriptural evidence, theistic conduct, and uh, perseverance in practice. This is the translation. So the highest devotion, bhaktim uttamam, the topmost bhakti. So previous shloka said that uh, when the pure spiritual experience is excited by means of cognition and service, by jnana and bhakti, super excellent unalloyed devotion. Bhakti, uttama bhakti with prema lakshana, with, with uh, characterized by love of God, is manifested. So, by jnana and bhakti, Lord Mahavishnu said to Brahma, by jnana and bhakti, you apply yourself, practice, and the achievement will be uttama bhakti, love of God, and that will be manifested with Krishna Prem. So now how to do that? How to do that? How to practice that? That is now explained in today's shloka. No? The method of attaining Krishna Prema is explained. Pramana is based on pramanas, by scriptural evidence, that of them, sadacharai, by theistic conduct. So Srila Jiva Goswami explains these words that sadacharai, but theistic conduct, sadachar. Sadachar, we know what is sadachar. That of them, abhyasa, practice, nirantaram, constantly. So this is explained. Attained by slow degrees, means by constantly practice. It may take some time, okay? Bodhayan, awakening. So bodhayan, awakening, awakening means awakening of consciousness, basically, you know? That's the idea. Realization will come. And what is the realization? Atman Atmanam. The realization of the self, that I'm spirit soul, I'm not this material body, I'm eternal servant of Krishna. Okay? And um, this Sadachara means, Sadachara will be developed by following those who have Sadachara by following the pure devotees. That will be explained in the purport in details. And uh, uh, everything is done, of course, based on scriptural evidence. Pramana is there. Then that person taking shelter of the Lord, he practice and achieves bhaktim apyuttamam lavet. Then one can actually achieve pure bhakti. So the process is described here, how to achieve that uttama bhakti. <clears throat> okay, so we'll go. Uh, on reading the purport. In purport, Bhakti Thakur explains, and Srila Pakistan Saraswati puts this in the English. Evidence. Evidence means pramana. Pramana, scriptural evidence. Evidence, the devotional scriptures. So this already we discussed in previous shloka. Because that jnana and bhakti will lead to uttama bhakti, that jnana is not in personal knowledge. So here again, what we are discussing when we say jnana, uh, we discuss bhakti shastras, or those scriptures that invokes bhakti, 
Srimad Bhagavatam here. Srimad Bhagavatam, Vedas, Puranas, the Gita, etc. So, Bhagavatam, of course, Gita, of course, Puranas, those portions we describe Bhakti, Vedas, those portions which describe Krishna Bhakti also, particularly. Okay, so here immediately it's given that, that um, Ramana. So what, what do you find here, the method? See the shloka. What do you find? What is the process? What do you find? You see the shloka. The highest devotion attained by slow degrees, by method of constant endeavor, help of scriptural evidence, theistic conduct, perseverance in practice. So basically what, what we have here, uh, we have these four things. Okay, I'll just enlarge a little bit so you can see. To achieve Uttama Bhakti, based on Pramanas, these three things are practiced. So four things are described in Shloka, the Pramana, and then the method, the tasty contact, Sadachar, practice, Abhyas, and Nirantaram, constantly, or perseverance, as it said in the, in the purport. Okay, so these three things are now being described in the purport. So we'll go one by one. The, we find in the purport this information. Pramana, based on scriptural evidence, Srimad Bhagavatam, Vedas, Puranas, etc. So these are all the, the Bhakti Shatsas, Bhakti Grantas. That is clear. Okay. And now for us, particularly in ISKCON, this means Srila Prabhupada's books. Okay. That's, that's our field of knowledge. This is our Mula Grantas to study. Prabhupada's books are first. They are, everything is given in Prabhupada's books. They are essence of all Vedas. And they are enough to, to purify us, to take us to the platform of bhakti, and that we can return back home, back to Godhead. Okay. When we say Vedas, yes, Vedas. Uh, but Acharyas, our Guru Parampara, already studies, studied all the Vedas. Correct? Um, Nana Shastra Vichara Naikanipuno, Swadharma Sansthapako. They, they researched all the Vedas Acharyas and they, they, they took the most important points they put in their books and they established what is the Dharma, what is the Uttama Bhakti, what is the pure Bhakti, what is a Haituki, a Pratikata Bhakti. That, so this is already established. So this essence of all Acharyas teaching, Prabhupada put in his books. So for us, it's very important that Prabhupada's books are the law. They are the number one. They, this is our books are the basis, Prabhupada said. We base our spiritual life on Prabhupada's books. What Prabhupada said in his purport is equal to Vedas. There's no difference, Prabhupada speaking, or you read directly from Rig Veda or somewhere, because it's all on transcendental platform. He's a self-realized soul. Kubarhi Sadachar was accepted and recognized by everyone. The, the dhira dhira janapriya, whether they were karmis or they were devotees, everybody understood Prabhupada is saintly person. And, and they could appreciate, till, in some extent, till some extent, his contribution. Some of the karmis, they admit that uh, no religious movement spread so fast in the history of the world, like the Hare Krishna movement in 14 years, you know, basically 12 years. 12 years effectively from 65 to, to from 65 to 77. In 12 years, no movement, religious movement spread so fast. You know, the, the, even when Jesus was there, Christianity was very small. It was a handful of followers. Later on, when he uh, withdrew his pastimes, later on it expanded. Many, many years later. Huh? No, nothing expands. So even karmis can appreciate the activities of pure devotees. So for us, it's very important to understand this. Prabhupada's books are our Vedas. That's all. Gita, Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Nectar Devotion. Prabhupada says four books are enough. Famous statement. Say four books are enough. Gita, Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, and Nectar of Devotion. And of course, all other books are there. Whatever Prabhupada wrote, whatever he commented upon, this is an eternal source of guidance and inspiration and purification for us. And these are the law books. Nothing, every other book which is published in ISKCON, if it's following in the persons of Prabhupada's conclusions, is accepted. Otherwise, rejected. 
simple, as simple as that. And all other books have value because they present teachings of Srila Prabhupada. All other lecturers, preachers, teachers, everybody is accepted as a bona fide based on how much he follows Prabhupada and how much he follows the, the conclusions that Prabhupada given in his teachings. And of course, these are not different from conclusions of previous acharyas, as we've seen so many times in this seminar, quoting from different acharyas and then quoting you Prabhupada purpose, speaking the same thing and, you know, explaining it right to the essence, right to the point. So this is just, by the way, for our own Sampradaya, for us, particularly Iskon, these are Prabhupada's books for us, the Bhakti Shastras. Okay, so the Pramana is explained by Bhakti and Saraswati Thakur and Bhakti and Thakur as a, where is that? Evidence, the devotion scriptures, Bhagavatam, Vedas, Puranas, Gita, etc. Okay, Srila Prabhupada explains in the purport, because the living entities are parts and parts of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, they're all sons of the Lord. And for their benefit, because they are hovering under the impression that they can lord it over material nature, the Vedas are given to them for their guidance. Now, what is the purpose of Veda? Veda means knowledge, to take us out of ignorance. Vedas are given to deliver conditioned souls from material clutches. Therefore, the Vedas are called Apaurusheya, for they are not written by any man or demigod, including the first living creature, Brahma. Brahma is not the creator or author of the Vedas. Vedas appear from the four mouths of Brahma, from his forehead, from the whole four mouths, four Vedas appear. But he heard them by receiving the transcendental sound vibration, Diksha, from Krishna. So he is not creator. He may be first speaker of Vedas, but not the creator of it. He is also one of the living beings in this material world. Therefore, he does not have the power to write or speak the Vedas independently, even Brahma. <coughs> So, so that's the eternal discussion with atheists. Why should I accept Vedas as spiritual? How do I know Vedas are spiritual? So, first of all, Vedas themselves declare, Vedo Narayana Sakshat. Vedas are directly Lord Narayan, manifestation of the Lord, not different from the Lord. Second thing is, they are not written by any man. There is no historical record. They were written by the man. In all Vedas, they say that, they are re revealed sound, revelations, Shabda Pramana, sound vibration coming from the above material coverings. So this is, this is uh, Vedas themselves says this, the Sadachar, the great Sadhus who follow the Vedas, they're perfect gentlemen in their conduct, pure souls, unmotivated, not on ego, not after material followers or name, fame, prestige, money, not in any of this. So we can trust them, trustworthy. The Dharmic people, they say Vedas are right. And by Bahavo Jnana Tapasa Putamad Bhava Magata, many of them who follow the Vedas became pure. We buy the practical evidence, Pratyaksha Paramana, that if you follow what Veda says, you become pure person. You become happy. You become saintly. You become devotee. You, you will not take birth again in material world. These are the evidences. We have evidence that you practice, you, you, your life will change. By hearing Srila Prabhupada's purpose, by hearing from Srila Prabhupada's followers, by reading Srila Prabhupada's books, by hearing the arguments presented by Srila Prabhupada, our life has changed. This is the proof. This is the proof that Vedas are true. Because if you follow Vedic methodology, you can get the realization that, yes, I'm spirit soul, I'm eternal servant of Krishna. I should be engaged in Krishna service. And millions of people, millions of people are following the Vedas. Still, still they follow the Vedas. Huh? So these are all the, so eternal discussion with atheists. Why should I accept? Because it works. Now, yeah. it works. And then all this, now we can go on into many discussion. How can material lips and tongue and voice produce spiritual sound. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare. But spirit has no limits. Spirit can appear anytime, any form, any place. Spirit can, if spirit wants, he can manifest in material elements. 
and make it spiritual. Matter has limit, spirit has no limit. And where is the proof? The proof is that when I chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, that I, I, my consciousness rises. I feel purified, I feel saintly, my mind become peaceful. And my mind become theistic, not atheistic. I, I change my conduct, I change my qualities, I change my bad habits, I change my desires, I change my consciousness by chanting. Chant any other slogan. Raupat was joking. Coca-Cola, Cola, Cola, Coca-Cola, and you go mad, you know, chanting all this material sound vibration. Won't purify you. Not any word, not any sound will do the job. Particular sound is in power. Golo Kera Prema Dhana Hari Nama Sankirtan. Krishna's name came from spiritual world, is not material. So we have so many evidences. We chant, we are happy. No? Any other material sound, the biggest film song, hit song, how many times you will hear? Hundred times you'll hear, two months, three months, one year you will hear. No? And then go on. New, new song, the latest song. Every year we hear, the latest movie, the hit movie. The hit song, every year comes new one. Why? Because previous one becomes boring. Becomes boring because it's material. Adhyanta want, it has beginning and end. Nate, Shu, Ramate, Buddha. Those who are intelligent, they will not go for something which has beginning and end. They will not go for material sound vibration. They will not go for material pleasure. So anyway, where does our power share basically? Every living entity within this material world is subject to four deficiencies. He commits mistakes. He accepts one thing for another. He cheats and he has imperfect senses. Therefore, because of these mistakes, four problems of human condition solved that cannot be cause of the Vedas, cannot be source of the Vedas. Whatever human being writes, there is some fault in it. But because Vedas are apaurusha, not written by the ordinary person, therefore we accept it as a transcendental sound vibration. Paurushaya shabda. Is material sound vibration. Apaurushaya, not material sound vibration. Not written by common man who is prone to form mistakes. Not the Lord, neither his pure devotees. Both of them are free from these four mistakes. Uttam Adhikari is free from these four mistakes. This is, this is the understanding. The Vedas, however, are not written by any living creature within this material world. Therefore, they are said to be Apaurushaya. No one can trace out the history of the Vedas. Of course, modern human civilization has no chronological history of the world or, or the universe, and it cannot present actual historical fact older than 3,000 years. And you can see in history, if something is, say, 5,000 years, 3,000 years, they have no clue. There's no way to present it. There's no evidence to preserve also, you know? Sometimes they say, oh, this artifact is 100,000 years old. So somebody asks, so how do you know it's not 120,000 years? Yeah, 100,000 years means from 80,000 to 120,000 could be anything, maybe up to 200,000. You're just throwing thousands around like that, you know? It means how do you, how can you pin it down? You know, we build this stone temple and after 200 years, somebody will come and say, let's see when this temple was built. So they sample the stone. Can you sample the stone? Stone is thousands of years old, you can't, you can't find the date by the stone sampling, no? So how they find dating? Dating find by the charcoal, most probably, on the site, no? So say temple is built, you know, now, and after 200 years, somebody was camping nearby and put some fire nearby. And after 1,000 years later, scientists come and find the charcoal and say, oh, but charcoal we can date. That those who are building, they were cooking here. So this is the... You understand? These are, anyway, those who know a little bit of the scientific methodology will understand these four mistakes are very prominent in the science. And they lie also. No? There were scientists who found articles. They, the scientists believed that in Africa, what we call today is Africa, Central Africa, Jericho, the first city where human remnants were found. So from there, humans spread to Europe, to Asia, and then went to the north and then went to North America, and then later went to South America. So according to Articrafts, you will find the oldest bones, human kind of, in Africa, then you will find a little younger, maybe 100,000 years old you will find in Africa. So 70,000 years old you will find maybe in Europe and Asia, and then you know maybe 50,000 years old North Europe, and then 25,000, 15,000, 
25,000 years old, you'll find in North America, and South America should be around 15,000 years old because it took time for them to come. Then archaeologists, geologists, they discovered artifacts in South America, human artifacts, 100,000 years old. And doesn't fit to their belief. So what they report? If he reports 100,000 years old, nobody will accept. So to make his career, he said, 25,000 years old. Oh, 10,000 more older than what we accepted. We thought it's 15,000, but now we find 25,000. That is accepted. But if, if they say it's 100,000 years old, it won't be accepted by anybody, although it is done by scientific method. So they lie, they cheat to have their career, preserve their career, you know? Now it's coming more and more due to internet. Now truth is coming up more and more. All around the world, they're finding articles, 100,000, 200,000 know, human bones. So basically, they have no clue. Make it long story short. Of course, modern human civilization has no chronological history of the world or the universe. But where does they have? That's the difference. And it cannot present actual historical facts older than 3,000 years. Because no one has traced out when the Vedas were written, because they were never written by any living being within this material world. This is the reason why you cannot pin down who wrote the Vedas, because they were not, wrote, they were not written down. They were Shruti. Bhagavan spoke to Brahma. Brahma spoke to his disciples. They spoke to their disciples. Orally were transferred. And they were not writing down. Just now, at the end of Dwapar Yuga, they were, they were written down by Vyasa for people in Kali Yuga because they have no brain to remember, to memorize. Previously, people were just here. Disciples will hear the mantras and memorize. There was no need to write down. Shruti Dharas, Brahmacharis, they could remember. The memory is powerful. And even today, many, many Gurukulas still run in India based on this. First thing, why is that? You go to Guru. Why is that? Tasman Guru Prabhupada, Jigyas to Sharyu Then? Shabde Parejan Vishnatham. What? Shabde Parejan Vishnatham. No, another one. Samit Pani, Samit Pani, Shrotriyam, Brahmanishtam. Samit Pani, you do service, you bring the firewood for the Shrotriyam. Shrotriyam means what? Shruti, hearing the Shruti, hearing the Vedas. Shrotriyam, you hear Vedas from the Guru. Brahmanishtam. Who is situated in Sadachar? Who is Brahman realized? Who is Nashochati, Nakangshati? And if he is devotee, you are a perfect guru. <laughs> yeah? So first they memorize the Vedas. Then they learn Tatparyas, how to, how to practice explanations later on comes. So Shruti orally, they were transferred. All other systems, and then they were written down by different pandits, uh, other Vyasadas guidance to be preserved for people who cannot memorize. And now they say, ah, oh, this is, they have written this date. But you can see the dates, Krishna speaks in Bhagavad Gita. Arjun, oh, Gita is very old, 5,000 years old. 5,000 years old, Gita, Krishna spoke 5,000 years ago to Arjun. And what Krishna says, Imam Vivasvate Yoga, Proktavam, Ahamavyam, Vivaswan, Manavepra, Manur, Ikshva, Kavebra. Yoga, Prokta, Puratana, these all science are given 120 million years ago to Sun God. Bang. Big bang. Another big bang in scientific community. <laughs> Mind blowing fact. Krishna instructed at the beginning of creation, Vivaswan, the Sun God, millions of years ago. Bang. <laughs> no? So all these things are explained. Okay, all other systems of knowledge are defective because they have been written or spoken by men or demigods who are products of this material creation. But Bhagavad Gita is a power share, for it was not spoken by any human being or any demigod for this material creation. It was spoken by Lord Krishna, who is beyond material creation. Bhagavantam adokshajam, adokshajam, beyond power of eyes to see, beyond power of senses and mind and intellect to perceive. This is called Adokshaja, Krishna's name. That is accepted by such stalwart scholars as Shankaracharya, not to speak of other acharyas such as Ramanuja and Madhva Acharya. In the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam, it is established, Tene Brahma Hrida, the Supreme Absolute Truth, the Personality God had instructed Brahma in the Vedic knowledge through his heart. Therefore, the evidence that Vedic knowledge is free from defects of mistakes, illusion, cheating, and imperfection is that is spoken by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Janardana, and 
and has thus been followed from time immemorial, beginning from Brahma. The Vedic religion or the principles of the Vedas have been followed by the highly cultured population in India since time immemorial. No one can trace out the history of Vedic religion. There, therefore, it is Sanatana. And any blasphemy against the Vedas is, is calculated to be atheism. Whoever does not accept Vedas as a Shabda Pramana, as a transcendental sound vibration, the best knowledge about God, the best evidence of God's existence, he is atheist, Nasti Kavad. The Vedas are described as Setu, that which means a bridge. If one wants to attain his spiritual existence, one has to cross an ocean of nations. The Vedas are the bridge by which to cross the, such a great ocean. The conclusion is that the person who rebels against the Vedic principles are them themselves the evidence that the Vedas are authoritative. Look at this argument, really nice argument. Person who are not accepting Vedas, they prove the Vedas are right. Because by not following the Vedic principles, they become like animals. <laughs> what a proof, you know. Such an animalistic person are themselves evidence of the supremacy of the Vedic regulations. Because Vedas make you control your mind and senses. We don't want to follow. Then you live like an animal. Darwin theory of evolution that from monkey, uh, man has come. But their Darwin theory of, is Darwin theory of devolution. Because from human form, you are not following Vedas, you become like a monkey. And indeed, next life you become like a monkey. You want to have sex, you want to jump from one topic to another without uh, concluding anything. You jump from one branch to another. You, you don't want to discriminate who is your mother, who is sister, who is married, who is unmarried, just have sex like a monkey. Then Bhagavan say, Swagatam, you become monkey next life, no problem. So look at this evidence that Vedas are right. If you don't follow, you become like animal, and it's true. I don't need Vedas and God to be good man. But you need, because you cannot put, pin down the, the line, what is right, what is wrong. You cannot delineate what is Sat and what is Asat. You cannot tell what is Dharma, what is Adharma. You cannot say, 100 years ago, to be publicly homosexual was not accepted anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. 50 years ago was not accepted. Now it's accepted. Okay, today is not accepted this, uh, some bad things called pedophilia. I not explain the term, it's so bad that I cannot speak in front of Jesus. But maybe after 100 years, maybe it will be accepted. And you say, no, it will never be accepted. That's what they say for homosexuality 100 years ago. So what is the point? The point is the society which has no fixed rules, the way of conduct, of morality, will always degrade. Because it's changing. In India, to kill cow is bad. And in Bangladesh, it's very good. In America, it's good. In India, it's bad. So who is right? We will say, we are right. And they will say, we are right. But Dharma to Sakshat Bhagavat Pranitam. But Dharma is given by Bhagavan. It's fixed. You have to accept what God says, what Veda says. Then only peace in society. Then only you can, you can live normal life. Then only you can. And, and the proof is that you follow Vedic principles. You become cultured, civilized person. No animal killing. No intoxication. No gambling. No illicit sex. Ahimsa. Amanitvam, Adambitvam, Ahimsa, Shanti Rajam, Acharya Pasanam, Shaucham, Atma Staryam Vinigra. This, this is the knowledge. This is Vedic civilization. The goal of civilization is product, produce high character people, pure souls, good population, not one Sankaras, not unwanted population. So this is all explained here. Vedas, Vedas are need. Uh, Srila Prabhupada explains further. The Vedas are known as Shabda Brahma because evidence taken from the Ved Vedas con constitutes the ultimate understanding. This is because Shabda Brahma of the Vedas represents the Supreme Personality of Godhead. However, the real essence of Shabda Brahma is the chanting of Hare Krishna mantra. Now see the link between Vedas and Maha Mantra. Veda is just Sairaya, Aha Meva Vedyo. All Vedas are meant to know Krishna. And in Kali Yoga, Kali Kale Nama Rupa Krishna Vatar. In Kali Yoga, Krishna appears in the form of holy name. And by chanting holy name, what is achieved? Holy name reveals Rupa of the Lord. Nama reveals Rupa. Rupa reveals Guna. 
Guna reveals Leela. Leela reveals Dham. Goes on. Some, all of them are manifested from the name. So, look at this. The real essence of Shabda, Brahma, is chanting of Hare Krishna Mahamantra. By vibrating this transcendental sound, the meaning of everything, both material and spiritual, is revealed. How to understand this? So by chanting Hare Krishna, I will pass my medical exam or my engineering college, I can pass by chanting Hare Krishna. What is the meaning of this? Everything is, uh, meaning of everything, both material and spiritual is revealed. Hmm? Yeah, but what is it? What does it mean? Okay, that's spiritual. But what about material knowledge is revealed? What is that? Okay, close, close, but not exactly what I expected. Okay, but not exactly what I expected. Yes. Yes. Right. But why should he reveal material knowledge to us? Okay. Okay, so what, what I understand is like this. Vibrating transcendental sound, the meaning of everything, both material and spiritual is revealed. The meaning of material is revealed. The purpose of material, you know. And then you know how to use everything, how to use matter in Krishna service. Because that's really the purpose. The purpose of material existence is also for Krishna's pleasure. I may not know how computer works exactly, exactly. By chanting, I may never understand how it works. I can chant over computer, but not understand how it works. But I know why it works. I know how to use it properly. Okay? And not only that, but by chanting Hare Krishna, we accept the Vedas. We accept the principles explained in the Vedas. What is it? Varnasham Dharma. These are the visions according to the conditions. The Jiva is covered by Sattvagun, Rajagun, Tamagun. And then we also know how to act. We know how modes are acting. We know material knowledge. We know how modes are working on us, how to overcome them. There you have Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra, Brahmachari, Vanipras, Grihas, Sanyas. Because of the modes, we understand this. So we know also how matter works. We know what is Maya. We know what is bad. We know if you put the, the ghee on the fire, what will happen? We know how it works. We are not fools. Therefore, we know how to conduct ourselves. So like that. This Hare Krishna is not different from the personality of Godhead. The meaning of everything is received through the air, through sound vibration. Even material knowledge, you get it orally. Or you read a book, anyway, sound vibration. <laughs> the vibration may be material, spiritual, but without sound vibration, no one can understand the meaning of anything. So Prabhupada said that the transcendental sound vibration, Shabda Brahma from Vedas. Essence of it is in holy name. By chanting holy name, we can understand everything. If you understand Krishna, if you come out on the sun, you can see yourself, you can see sun, you can see the world around you. Once you realize Krishna, now Krishna's Nama will reveal Krishna Rupa. Once you say Krishna, you know what is matter, what is spirit, what is body, what is your Sparupa, what is Krishna's Rupa, what is Lila? Everything is revealed. But finish. How? By sound vibration. As simple as that. So, okay, this is the first one. We have to hurry up. <laughs> okay, then in the purport, this is the evidence. This is the first fault, pramana, by scriptural evidence. Okay, so what, how to practice? How to apply jnana and bhakti? Here is explained. Uh, theistic conduct. The conduct of persons, pious persons, sadhus, who are pure devotees, and the conduct of those pious persons who practice devotion to God accurated by spontaneous love. What is the difference between these two? Attention, please. Huh? <laughs> exactly, yeah. So, sadhachar, this is what we have to practice. Jnana and bhakti is a sadhachar is practice based on shastra already we established. So, by theistic conduct, theistic conduct of persons, sadhus, who are pure devotees, this refers to devotees who practice Vaidhi Bhakti, Sadhana Bhakti. And 
and the conduct of those pious persons who practice devotion to Godhead activated by spontaneous love, activated by spontaneous love. So you understand this is really the description of Vaidhi and Raganuga, Sadhana Bhakti. We are hearing this uh, practice of Sadhachar by, by following the pure devotees who practice either Vaidhi Bhakti or Raganuga Bhakti. But we have to come in association with sadhus. Otherwise, we will not be able to develop good qualities. Satsanga. Sangat Sanjayate Kama. In association, desire is born. If you desire, if you desire good things to happen, you, or let's put opposite way. If you associate with saintly person, you become saintly. If you associate with bad people, you become bad. Prabhupada says, if you associate with drunkards, you will be, start drinking. If you associate with business people, you start getting desire, money, money, let's earn money. You know, so if you satsanga, satsanga means sat, etern, spiritual, eternal, related to Krishna. So that is required. So, um, okay, let me see what Prabhupada says. Prabhupada explained like this. The great soul is samachitta. Samachitta. Equal to everyone. This is characteristic. Great soul is never angry. They are friends to everyone. And sadhava, sadhava means sadhachar, clean habits. Mahatma cannot be implicated with these four principles of sinful life. That is the first test. Okay, no illicit sex life, no gambling, no meat eating, no intoxication. So whoever saintly person poses himself to be, whoever he is, if he doesn't follow four regulative principles, in, in Vedic standard, he is no better than animal. Dvipada Pashu, two-leg animal, that's all. Animals, they don't follow four principles. Humans, they do follow. This is the difference. So somebody comes and says, I follow this religion. Okay. What is your sadhachar? This is our question. We don't question. It is not that we don't accept uh, Christianity or Mohammedanism based on the, I believe in this God, you believe in that God. No, we are asking Sadhacha, what do you follow? Even person may say, I'm Hindu. Are you eating meat? Yes. You drink? Yes. Then what nonsense Hindu you are? Sadhacha, or Sadhacha. There's no conduct, there's no spiritual progress. This is not accepted, particularly people who are leaders, who are preachers, who are uh, propagators of the religion. If they, they, if the Pope is eating meat, the Christian leader is eating meat. Somebody donated farm of small calves for his breakfast. Pope, in, in, the, in the Italian, I mean from Croatia, so in Croatia we call it Italian, it's, it's said in local language, in Latin it says Papa. Definitely, <laughs> Papi is sinner. The leader is sinner, and how the pupils, how the followers will be good? How can you eat meat and preach God loves everyone? How is it possible? No? For example, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu discussed with Chan Kazi, same point. Why are people eating meat? Again, no? same problem. So where is the question of, of pure religion? So basic religious principle, therefore, believe in God, but not follow anything. So, okay, some kind of religion, shall us, better than be atheist, no? But what is your progress? Microscopic, 0 0.00001 consciousness, nothing. Now, if you don't follow illicit sex, gambling, meat eating, intoxication, no? Famous, famous uh, beers are made by the priests, famous scotch whiskey, Whiskies are all made by the churches, traditionally. Never heard. The famous uh, rum is called Old Monk. That's the brand, Old Monk. You know, for realization only. They said it's very cold countries you have to drink a little bit. <laughs> Asadachar. That, that's that. So, Prabhupada said, this is called Sadachar, clean habit. Anything beyond this, unclean habit. If you don't follow these four principles, you are not, you can't, you are not even human, what to speak of spiritual. So here it is stated, sadhava. Sadhava means sadhachar, clean habit. Okay? 
Prabhupada said again, <clears throat> therefore, anyone who wants to make progress in spiritual life must be sadhacha. His behavior must be very regulated. Asadachari, unclean, non-regulated, cannot make any progress. If somebody says that whatever you like, you can do, there's no difference. You can imagine your own way. This is going on nowadays. Whatever you like, you can do. You can imagine your own way of self-realization. But this is not recommended in Vedic literatures. One must be Sadhachar. So now you see Sadhachar based on Vedas. You see the link, Pramanas. Sadhachar based on Vedas. All three things, Sadhachar, Abhyas, Nirantaram. All three are based on the Vedas. This is the beginning of Sadhachar. To rise early in the morning, to cleanse, then chant, or chant the Vedic mantras, or simplified as in the present age, Hare Krishna mantra, Maha mantra. This is the beginning of Sadhachar. So one who is not coming, Mangalati, who is not able to, even in the house, doesn't matter, you don't have to come to temple, but in the house, who is not rising early in the morning, who is not chanting, who is not taking bath, how he will progress? How is it possible? How is it possible to progress? There's a basic, basic sattva gun principles. Basic. Sattvam sanjayate jnana. We have to practice sattva gun. We have to practice ourselves. So Sadhajar means to become free from sinful reaction. Unless one follows the regulative principles, he cannot be freed. And unless one is fully free from sinful reaction, he cannot understand what is God. Those who are not in Sadhajar, regulative principles for them, just like animals, they are not expected to follow any. Of course, by nature, they follow regulative principles. Because even animals, they have their mating period only once a year. Or twice a year. Most of the animals. But the human, any time, any place, any circumstance. Still, but human beings having advanced consciousness, so instead of using it properly, they misuse the advanced consciousness and thus they become lower than animals. So these are really, really, you know, um, warnings by Prabhupada. And why Prabhupada was attractive? Why they believe Prabhupada? Why they follow him? Because of Sadhacha. Because of Sadhacha, you know. No, no material desires, no attachment, no sense gratification. Prabhupada came to that, uh, what is it? Uh, they had this big, big uh, rock festival. Um, stay high forever. They invited all the famous rock bands in America early days. I think that was 69. Shamasundar Prabhu arranged with devotees. And Prabhupada came, and so many young people were completely in bliss, chanting, singing with him. And he's an old gentleman. You may say old man in the body appearing like that. It is, why all these young people are attracted? Prabhupada said, because I'm free from sex desire. Then becomes attractive. Because as soon as there is some desire, there is some tendency exploiting. There is some uncomfortable feeling. There is some unpleasant way of dealings. You want something, you want something, you know. But nothing to hide. Saintly person, Prabhupada, nothing to hide. Once there was all money came from Americans' BBT to build the temples in India, and Prabhupada was sitting in his office in Juhu, and big bundle of money came, and they were changing dollars into rupees. So you know how much bundles of rupees were there on the table, you know? and Prabhupada was counting. And uh, somebody came from police. Who came? Commission of police. Commission of police came. So now commission of police come in the room, and there's all this bundle of money there. So what will other people do? You try to hide, cover, and you know, otherwise you have to explain all this money, you know? Or you know, feel uncomfortable, you know, like money. You know, when you come in shop, somebody is counting money, immediately you come, he's hiding, putting below the table, you know? So, commissioner came, Prabhupada said, oh, you are police people, we are sorry, you should protect us. And Prabhupada took bundle of some notes, you know? I said, you should people protect us, you should protect sadhus, and we're threatening with this bundle of notes. You know? Who can do that? You know, who can do that? No, it's not afraid. Police, hey, what is this money, Swamiji? So much money you have, Swamiji, you're supposed to be renounced, you know? No fear, Prabhupada, this is all for Krishna we are using. And threatening policemen with bandha, you should protect us like this. <laughs> who can, only pure soul can do that. Nobody else can do that, you know? So this is, this is required. Okay, now we have something unusual in ISKCON. We are a mixed bag, indeed. We, we have so many foreigners in our movement who doesn't know what is sadhacha. Even if you say sadhacha, they will, most of them, what is that? Something to eat. It's unknown. 
And the Western culture is not really culture, it's, it's a culture based on sense gratification. Indian culture is based on self-realization. So what do you do? What do you do now when you have foreign devotee who comes to India and wants to preach? And uh, then the Brahmana see him eating with left hand sometimes. Or touching lips to glass. All Brahmanas would sip it from there. Prabhupada would sip it from there. He won't touch with his lips. But you can see devotee like that. Sometimes you see even sannyasi western guru in the middle of Bhagavatam class, he drinks a little water, touch his lips, and with same hand he touches the book Bhagavatam. So the Brahmanas meet, oh, oh, Sadhacha, he's not following Sadhacha. So they won't take seriously. It's difficult to preach in India if you don't follow Sadhacha. But what is our understanding? Hmm? Who is better? The Brahmana who follows Sadhacha perfectly, he will never touch with left hand anything. He will never uh, touch his lips, the glass. <coughs> what to speak of uh, contaminated hand touching the shasas or something. But he is not devotee of Krishna. He is having TV. He is going to cinema. He put his son in the best college. And he followed perfect Sadaj. And you have this nature who is left hand, right hand, you know. He doesn't even sit and eat. He walks and eats, you know. You know, and who touch his lips, not touch his lips, he licks with his tongue also, whatever little, he licks also with the tongue, nicely glass, and the left hand, right hand, up to the elbow, he licks after prasadam. Who is better? But he is devotee of Krishna, giving his life for service. So, what? Who is better? <laughs> devotee is better because he is devotee, okay. Now, of course, that doesn't justify that anyway. Who cares? I can left hand, right. You come in India and you eat left hand and do all the nonsense. You spoil our preaching, sir. Sorry, Prabhuji, you know, we apologize to you, but you spoil our preaching. Why not learn something, at least what Prabhupada taught? Prabhupada told us, don't eat with left hand. Don't give and take things with left hand. No? Prabhupada taught, the Kaushalya Mataji remembers in, in Prabhupada's memories, he gives example how Prabhupada in Bombay, when they were going every day eating life member's house for preaching. Uh, when they give banana, Prabhupada says, just with one hand you peel off, don't touch with left hand. So this is a pro banana is in your plate, and you have to peel it with right hand and eat it like that. No? So the, the, the Prabhupada taught something. So at least let's follow this much. No? So if you have the Western devotee who is trying to preach and follow Sadhacha, that will be very effective. No? That's much better than just, ah, this is not important. We just chant Hare Krishna and remain situated in Chandala culture. All of the, <laughs> which is not conducive, is not conducive. Shuchi, muchi, nothing, who cares? Everything contaminated, you know? Many times, Western devotees, that you know, left hand, right hand, contaminated plate, contaminated pot, everything is messed up, you know? Particularly when you go to Grihastha's house, it's such a mess, you know? Just, they don't know anything, you know? But it's contaminated, it's not contaminated, you know. Fellow is eating and then shaking hand with you and touching you on the shoulder. You know? Eating, eating, right hand, then I eat more and tapping you like this. You remember one particular guest we have. Whoever sits around him will be contaminated for prasad. <laughs> he couldn't hold control it, you know. But still, the bhakti should be seen. No? That should be first. But if you learn this, sadhachar is good. It's a, so Prabhupada explained. Just like these European and American students, this is lecture in Mombasa, but this lecture to Indian community. Just like these European and American students, sometimes they cannot adopt the principles of Sadhacha as it is recommended. But, it does not, but that doesn't matter. Because they have devoted, they have sacrificed their life for Krishna, their sadhu. One has to understand this. They should be given the respect of sadhu because they have no other business than Krishna. That is recommended from Krishna. What is that recommended? Apichetsu duracharo bhajate maam ananya bhak sadhu reva samantavya sadhu reva samantavya. You should consider him sadhu, even if he did some mess a little bit because of previous bad habits, bad culture, bad background, attachments. Sadhu reva samantavya samya samas vitosi. Shipram Bhavati Dharma. Quickly he will come back to the path of Dharma. Because he is devotee, he will understand. Oh yes, I should not do like that. So that is the point. 
So this Krishna consciousness society is the, is the society of sadhus. Sangena sadhu bhaktanam, sadhu bhaktanam, Ishwara radhanena, Ishwara radhanena. And side by side, there should be Archana, deity worship, Ishwara Radhena, the rules and regulations, how to worship, Aradhanena. So one has to accept the spiritual master, trying to satisfy him, giving everything to spiritual master, and the association of Sadhu and Bhakta and Ishwara Aradhanena. So this Krishna consciousness movement is comprising all these items. Therefore, it is bona fide, authorized. Bonafide and authorized by whom? Authorized by Acharyas, bonafide from the Vedas. No? Who authorized? Prabhupada would say, we are speaking from authority. And somebody, Swamiji, who is your authority? I mean, the government of America or educational board or Oxford, or who is your authority? Parampara, Vedas. This is the authority. What is your materialistic authority? We don't accept your authority. So here are some quotes, not that Prabhupada didn't teach. Look at this. And this is on initiation ceremony. Chen Hare Krishna. And he is giving Japamala and Mataji is giving left hand or whoever was there. And probably right hand, not left hand. Keep forward your right hand. Yeah. So this much he has to teach. In the West, Prabhupada had to teach them that after second one, you take bath. Otherwise, it was not done. Even President of America, after second one, just wash his hands. I assume. <laughs> I believe so. <laughs> this much culture he has. Wash hands with soap. We always wash with soap. He is such a high. And the French people, they invented the perfumes because they were not taking bath regularly. So, you know, there was a need to contract the bad smell. Huh? And they wrote the book Bon Ton, the morality, the way of conduct of French people. So, how to cut your beef stick? You know, you have the bacon or something, some piece of meat in your plate. How to cut, how to keep fork, how to keep knife. What is better? What is the high class? The cut one by one piece, you cut a little piece of meat and put them out and eat, or you cut all the pieces and then you eat. What is the better? There is big discussion. This is bon ton, the way of conduct in French. And then the high class people, when they hold their drink, glass, whiskey or champagne, the small finger should be two inches away from the glass. This is considered high class. High class drinking. Where is the drinking in high class? How do you put this? How do you put these things together? How can be somebody who is drinking high class? Huh? What is that? This is mudra. This is chandala mudra. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, they have to look very nice, very royal. A royal drunkard. Royal drunkard. Okay, look at this. You, you come, come on. Not in left hand. Don't give anything by left hand. Don't take anything. That is etiquette. So Prabhupada said, you know, dealing with him. He, he instructed people to follow. No? So, all right. So Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada explains. According to Vedic civilization, right hand is a superior hand. And left hand is inferior hand. When you want to give somebody something, you must give it with the right hand. If you give it by the left hand, it is insult. But also, there is a Shastic rule, when you give impure things, like broomstick or something contaminated, then you give it with left hand. Not everything you do with right hand. If you are scratching your hair or ear, left hand, not the right hand, for example. So there are rules like that. All right. Okay. Oh my goodness, there's no time. All right, so here, the abhyas. Abhyasa means practice. Now Srila Bhaktisattva Saraswati Thakur explains practice. Practice, to learn about 10 basic principles, Dasha Mula, from Shastras. This is practice. Practice means study the Shastras, okay? And on receiving the name of Hari, as laid down in the same, embodying name, form, quality, and activity of the, the uh, divinity. Receiving the name of Hari means what? Uh, taking Diksha, taking initiation, then accepting it with full faith that that name is embodying form, quality, and activity of divinity. There is no difference. That all will be revealed by holy name. 
to practice chanting of the name by serving him night and day. Look at this statement. Practice the chanting of name by serving him day and night. So it's not chanting. You have to do some service. And service is not different from chanting the name. And it is service to name. What is service to name? Book distribution, the books we are spreading the glories of holy name. This is service to name. Kirtan is service to name. The dressing of deities, deity worship is service to the name. Cleaning the floor is service to the name. Prasadam distribution is service to the name. Practice the chanting of name by serving him night and day, by understanding the Krishna and his name. Abhinantvam namu namino. They're not different. This is what it is. The service must be done. Now, some people just won't chant. They don't want to do any service. I'm chanting, bro. I'm chanting. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. But you have to serve day and night the holy name. That is, so these are the practices. Okay. By, by this are meant study of Shastra and association with sadhus. Again, in association with sadhus who practice Vedas, who have sadhachar, we will be engaged. With, with the, when you, as soon as you come to temple, either you hear holy name or you get some service, you'll take prasadam, you'll have darshan, you'll be engaged in harikata, you'll be engaged in hari service, you'll be engaged in sadhu service to the guru, to the sannyasi, to pure devotee. No? So these are all practices. And then the tenfold offenses to holy name ceases by serving the name of hari and simultaneously, okay, so then chanting. Once you take Harinam Diksha and you serve all day in association with devotees, carefully avoiding 10 offenses. What are the 10 offenses? What are the 10 offenses? Sadam Ninda, Namna Paramam, you know the all 10 offenses. Now, the, all of this basically are ex fitting those Dasamulas principles, clarifying that don't offend devotees. Why? Because they are so dear to Krishna. Why? Because they are spreading the holy name. Okay. Then second, don't consider the names Shivasya Shivishnu, Rihaguna Nama Adi Sakalam, Diya, Vinam, Pashya, Sakalu Hari Nama Hitakara. Don't consider names of Shiva, uh, Brahma, or other demigods equal or independent of name of Vishnu. What is it? Sambandha Jnana must be clear. You see, if these 10 points of Dasamula are not clear, oh, uh, how to progress? You can chant, but if you think, I also Ganapati name is there, Shiva name is there, Durga name is there, all equal. It's not equal, no progress. No? Then you have third one, Guru Ravagya, disobeying order of spiritual master, or to consider him this ordinary person, he's elder now, Guru is older, he's talking like this, and angry, we are not following, but he's elder. You have offense. There is not principle of accepting. No? Then what do you have then? What is the fourth? Shruti Shastra Nindanam. Shruti Shastra Nindanam. To, to criticize Vedas, disobey Vedas, not follow sadhachar given in Vedas, not accepting Vedic conclusions, or any other book, Smritis, in the persons of Vedic conclusion, or the books by Acharyas, we are following into Vedic conclusion, not to accept that. Okay? So here you say the ten fall offenses to avoid and simultaneously practicing pious conduct. We also have to now pick up sadhacha. Not only that we were first in association of sadhacha people, now is expected while chanting, having initiation, that you follow some sadhacha. That it is expected that we, we progress. Practice is no other than following the mode of service of the name. Practice by sadhus without offense. Now here again in this purport, you can see hint to Raganuga also. Because practice is no other than following mode of service of the name. Mode of service of the name. Chanting, practice by sadhus without offenses. So if you're following in the mood of people who are <clears throat> chanting pure name and people who are <clears throat> devotees, gopis, Brajwasis who are already having love of God, then this is indicates here from Vaidhi Bhakti we came to Raganuga Sadhana, and that practice is not other than following that pure chanting. Chanting for the sake of bhakti, for the sake of Krishna Prem, not any material motivation or any any like that. By um, by perseverance in such practice and devotion characterized by love, 
which is the fruit of spiritual endeavor, makes her appearance in the pure essence of the soul. By this, following this, Sadachar, Abhyasa, all this practice, chanting, Diksha, following in the footsteps of pure devotees, following instruction, and then following Raganuga, uh, Nirantaranam, continuously, mm, patiently, with perseverance, all then, then the pure bhakti, uttama bhakti will be manifested, will be achieving love of God. So this is the, the parapath we went a little quickly. I just want to read a few more shlokas. So here, summary is here given. Abhyasa, practice in association with sadhus, study of the shastras, um, points from Dasamula. Not only Dasamula book, but these points are all in Prabhupada's books. This 10 points, okay? Receiving the name of Hari is obviously Diksha. Uh, chanting the name by serving him day and night, we were discussing this refers to preaching, deity worship, book distribution, prasadam distribution, like that. Following the mode of service of name practiced by sadhus, that refers to the Shuddha Bhakti practiced by the Raghunuga Bhaktas. So Prabhupada explained here, what are our practices? We ask our students to observe four prohibitive principles. No illicit sex, no, eat of meat, no eating of meat, fish or eggs, no gambling and no intoxication, including cigarettes, tea and coffee. One has to obey these four principles and chant Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, and you will find how, by this process only, these boys and girls are quickly improving. The process is, oops, what did I do? The process is simple, very simple. Beside that, we have got books, volumes of books, Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita. So you see our process. Follow four principles, Sadachar, based on Shastra, Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, and chant Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. You see that it's in one purpose, bang, all the shloka explained by Prabhupada. And though, of course, details we know, there are many details. Chanting means service to the name day and night, means everything else included. Not that we only chant, we preach, we distribute books, we talk about Krishna, we cook for Krishna, we clean for Krishna, we build for Krishna. All engagements are there. So Srila Prabhupada again explains <clears throat> that, uh, okay, this is very nice purpose. To practice regulated principles of bhakti yoga, one should, under the guidance of an expert spiritual master, follow certain principles. One should rise early in the morning, take bath, enter the temple, offer prayers, chant Hare Krishna, collect flowers to offer to deities, cook foodstuffs to offer to deities, take prasadam, and so on. There are various rules and regulations which one should follow. And one should constantly hear Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam from pure devotees. This practice can help anyone rise to the level of love of God. And then he's sure of his progress into the spiritual kingdom of God. This practice of Bhakti Yoga under the rules and regulations with the direction of spiritual master will surely bring one to the stage of love of God. This last sentence is definition of Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. The practice, service of Krishna under the guidance of Guru in, by, the, by the impetus of the rules and regulation given in Shastra is called Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. Now, this is basically what it is, definition. This is from Gita. Then Prabhupada explained. By practice of Krishna consciousness, however, one engages nine types of devotion service to the Lord. So, again, this Abhyasa means Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasaranam, Archanam, Vandaram, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atmani Vedam. The first and foremost of such devotion engagement is hearing about Krishna. That's why we always say that devotees, we have to hear, we have to hear the lectures. Prabhupada said, morning Bhagavatam, evening Gita. We have to hear everyday lectures. Hearing is important. Without hearing, there's no progress. You can see those devotees who do not come for the lectures, they, they, they're struggling in progress. They're not able to develop. They're not able to advance. Shravanam is heart of Kirtanam. Chanting will be good if good hearing is there. If there's no good hearing, there's no use of your chant. You, you, use is always there, but you will chant. Prabhupada say, you can cook on smoke for 300 years. It will take you long, 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 long time to be free from offenses to understand this uh, philosophy without hearing. Without hearing, Prabhupada spread all movement all over the world just by lecturing, mainly by lecturing. 
That was the main method. Later he installed the deities. Later on he established the farms. Later on he established the, the Guru Kulas. First he would just sit Kirtan and lecture. Kirtan and lecture, explain. Kirtan and explanation. And Kirtan and explanation. And then people were convinced, you know. This very powerful transcendental method of purging the mind of all misgivings. The more one hears about Krishna, the more one becomes enlightened and detached from everything that draws the mind away from Krishna. By detaching the mind from activities not devoted to the Lord, one can very easily learn vairagya. Vairagya means detachment from matter and engagement of the mind in spirit. In person, spiritual detachment is more difficult than attaching the mind to the activities of Krishna. Because spiritualists, they don't believe in Krishna's name, form, qualities, persons. They cannot talk about Krishna. They cannot think of Krishna. They cannot relish prasadam. Nothing they have, just dry control of mind. By pushing by your own intellect and force to control mind and senses. But we have Krishna's prasadam. Swaprasadana Dilabai, Syana Mrita Power, Radha Krishna Gunaga. We can talk 24 hours a day. We are not silent Mauna Babas. We talk about Krishna. That is real Mauna. Never talk Gramya Kata. We have taste delicious prasada, remnants of Krishna. We can sing and dance. We can, we can anything we can do for Krishna, but should be done for Krishna. This is practically because by hearing about Krishna, one becomes automatically attached to Supreme Spirit. This attachment is called Pareshanubhuti, spiritual satisfaction. It is just like the feeling of satisfaction of a hungry man has for every morsel of food he eats. The more one eats while hungry, the more one feels satisfaction and strength. Similarly, by the charge of devotional service, one feels transcendental satisfaction as the mind becomes detached from material objectives. It is something like curing disease by expert treatment and appropriate diet. Famous, of course. Hearing of the transcendental activities of Lord of Krishna is therefore expert treatment for the mind, mad mind. And eating the foodstuffs offered to Krishna is the appropriate diet for the suffering patient. This treatment is the protest of Krishna consciousness. Just see how clear, powerful this abhyas is explained by Prabhupada. Okay. Um, now, ISKCON is designed, is created by Prabhupada. Is designed to give satsanga, to engage people in these things, based on shastras. Okay? Diksha we get based on shastra. Bhagavatam and Gita we are studying and other Prabhupada's books. Deity worship based on shastra. Homams based on shastra. Abhishekas based on shastra. Festivals based on shastra. So pramana is done based on Vedic literature. Sadachar is practiced. Abhyasa is practiced. Nirantaram. And patience is required. Continuously we have to practice. We have to practice. Prabhu, Hare Krishna, 25 years I'm chanting, you know, uh, and still I'm not getting taste. No? Remember somebody asked, who was the Janani was Prabhu? Somebody asked Janani was Prabhu. 25 five years I'm chanting, still I didn't get taste for chanting. And the reply was like this. 25 years you are chanting, still you have no taste. Means something wrong you are doing. Some material desire you're cultivating, something you're not practicing properly. It is not possible that there is no any taste, man, after 25 years of chanting, you know. So this is the point, that it will come, but also patience is required. Perseverance. Nirantaram. Continue, 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 it will come. That Prabhupada say, mango will become ripen and sweet, but has to just remain attached to the tree. When small mango comes, they are not sweet, they are sour, green, kacha. Maybe pickle, good for pickle. But mango <clears throat> is supposed to be sweet. So if we remain attached to the guru and parampara, and we remain in satsanga, and we follow the instruction guru, we will also one day develop love of God. It will also ripen, we will also become pakka devote. Now we are a little kacha devotee. Therefore, there's envy, anger, anartas, uh, outbursts of anger and uh, criticizing offenses and all this nonsense is happening because we are, you know, some are nice, some are katamita devotees. <laughs> <laughs> some are sweet, some are bitter. No, that depends. But if we attach in satsanga, there, there is a 
treatment will be successful. Okay, so this is the, but we have to we start with this YD Bhakti, no? Then Srila Prabhupada hints and practices, Raganuga is also sadhana, is also practice. So Prabhupada hints to sadhana bhakti also and quotes from Shastra for advanced devotees. In Chaitanya and Charitamrita, it is said that no one can receive real favor of Supreme Personality Godhead without following the footsteps of gopis. So Raganuga means that you are following in the mood, in the bow, in the footsteps of Raga Atmika Bhaktas or Bhaktas who have already rag for Krishna in their heart. Pure devotees, Vrajvasis, Vrindavan Vasis, eternal associates of Krishna. Gopi, Anugatya, Vina, Aishwarya, Gyan. Okay, so Prabhupada quoted that, that this is uh, in Chaita and Charitamrita. Unless one follows footsteps of Gopis, he cannot attend the service of Lotus Feet of Krishna, the son of Nanda Maharaj. If one is overcome by knowledge of Lord's opulence, he cannot attend Lord Lotus Feet, even though he is engaged in devotional service. You may go to Vaikuntha by worshiping Lord in Aishwarya, but you cannot attend Vrindavan and conjugal mellows to Krishna unless you follow the, the gopis of Vrindavan. Lord Chaitanya replied in this discussion, Prabhupada says, Lord Krishna has specific characteristic. He attracts everyone's heart by mellow his personal conjugal love. By following the footsteps of inhabitants of planet known as Rajaloka or Goloka Vrindavan, one can attain the shelter of Lotus Feet of Krishna. So this is Raganuga Sadhana, following footsteps of inhabitants of Vrindavan. The conclusion is that one cannot associate with Krishna unless he has fully received the favor of the inhabitants of Rajabhumi. Therefore, if one wants to be delivered by Krishna directly, he must take to the service of the residents of Vrindavan who are unalloyed devotees of the Lord. So these are all um, explanation. Prabhupada give a few more quotes of, of uh, how one should follow the residents of Vrindavan. And uh, this is also confirmed in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Prabhupada quotes, the devotee should always think of Krishna within himself and should choose very dear devotee who is servitor of Krishna in Vrindavan. One should constantly engage in topics about that servitor and his loving relationship with Krishna. Suppose somebody who is attacked by Vatsalya Rasa, he will think of Mother Yashoda or Rohini and think of their service, glorify them, hear those pastimes when Krishna is involved. And this is how he practiced Raganuga Sadhana. One should live in Vrindavan. If one is physically unable to go to Vrindavan, he should mentally live there. Okay. So that the advanced devotee who is inclined to spontaneous love and service should follow the activities of particular Sathya Krishna in Vrindavan. He should execute service externally as a regulated devotee, regulative devotee. Externally both, Raganuga Sadhana and Vaidya Sadhana are same. You can't know who is practicing who. Because they attend Mangalati, they chant, they read, they finish their rounds. They offer the food to Krishna, everything is going on. But the Raghunuka Bhakta also simultaneously thinks of his eternal form, internal service to particular, following the first particular devotee uh, in that rasa he chosen in Vrindavan. So he should execute service externally as regulated devotee, as well as internally from his self realized position. Thus, he should perform devotion service both externally and internally. But Watch out, don't become now carried away and dream, dreaming something. Pushpa Akash. Oh, I'll be Gopi, I'll be Gopa, I'll be cow, I'll be this, I'll be that. Cool down. This that will come automatically, you know. Shilajiya Goswami also warns that thinking oneself one of associates of Supreme without following footsteps of Gopis is, a, is as offensive as thinking oneself supreme. Such thinking is an apparat. One has to practice living in Vrindavan by hearing about the talks of gopis with Krishna. However, one should not consider himself gopi for this is offensive. So there is a warning that that will come when it comes on his own, when Krishna reveals. When we are pure enough and we, we place Krishna by our service, then Krishna reveals. So, uh, okay. And now don't get disheartened. Oh, I'm chanting and I'm not still on that level this day. Chanting never goes in vain. And Prabhupada gives example of Ajamila and Gajendra. Prabhupada said that one should, one should chant and read and be absorbed. And it will give result. It will 
payoff, as we, we would say in English, you know. And what is an example? Ajamila. At the beginning, he was practicing Lil Bhakti and he gave a name Narayana. And, and then even he was degraded after in life. Still, he was saved by this little bit of chanting he did at the beginning of life, a little bit of devotion service. Gajendra also, previous life, he remembered some mantra. So Prabhupada said, apart from Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, all devotees to change some other mantras, like uh, Nasinga Stotra, or uh, what else Prabhupada said, I forgot. Uh, I have few, few, few Stotras Prabhupada said we could chant to remember, maybe Brahma Samhita he said, or something like this. That is good for us, because that may save us uh, when, when the time of death comes, when difficulty comes, like that, okay. And uh, Nirantaram, just last point, explaining this point of Nirantaram, constantly, incessantly. Srila Prabhupada explained this, that these practices, abhyas, in association with what is based on Shastra, should be constantly practiced with patience. Therefore, the shloka says, uh, look what shloka says, highest devotion is attained by slow degrees. Slow degrees means you have to be patient. Never give up the practice. Apratihata means under any circumstance, never stop chanting, never stop worshipping Krishna, never stop thinking of him, never stop offering food to him like that. And patiently the result will come. So Prabhupada explains, the yoga practitioner should be determined and should patiently prosecute the practice without deviation. One should be sure of success at the end and pursue this course with great perseverance, not becoming discouraged if there is any delay in the attainment of success. Success is sure for the rigid practitioner. Look at this sentence. Success is sure for rigid practitioner. Now, they don't be tough with others. When new people come, immediately jump on them. If you don't follow Ekadashi, you go to hell. First time person came on Sunday feast, shock, heart attack, you know. Have sense for others. With you, you be strict yourself. But when others come, please, you preach. Gradually purify them, engage them in the service, chant the holy name, give them prasadam. Slowly, 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 they'll get purified by shavanam and kirtanam, and then they will pick up sadhachar and everything else. Don't, don't scare people by all the rules, regulation, first day. You know, jump on, they bounce on them with all the, and then people collapse. Oh, this is so difficult. No, it's very easy. We chant Hare Krishna. Prabhupada say, I cheated you all. I told, just chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare. But then later I introduced so many rules and regulations. <laughs> But then they were ready to accept. In the beginning, if he started all rules, regulation, nobody would, nobody would stay. They cannot. So first they get purified, then they can accept. Regarding Bhakti Yoga, Rupa Goswami said, Utsaha nishchaya, nishchaya, dharya, tatta karma pravartana, sangatyaga, satovritte, shaddir, bhakti, prasidyati. One should execute process of Bhakti Yoga successfully with full hearted enthusiasm perseverance and determination. Okay, same thing. Now Prabhupada explained Nirantaram in this way, another place. Nirantaram means incessantly, without any partition. Look at this one, without partition. The this much and worldly conscious and this much and Krishna conscious. Krishna is good, the devotees are good, but money also important, papers also important. Papers means degree papers. Yeah? House also important, land also important. Fame also important, politics also important, good relation with politician also important. No? So this all, no? No, simply Krishna conscious. Bhavantam eva charan nirantaram. This from Stotra Ratna. How you can be so Krishna conscious? Now, prashanta nishesha mano ratantara. I shall finish all together all conclusions of my mind. So this is this how? By continuously practicing only no partition. No partition in the mind, no partition in desires. That is also Nirantaram. Bhavantam eva nucharan Nirantaram. Prashanta nishesha mano ratantara. By serving you constantly, one is free from all material desires and is completely pacified. This will Nirantaram bring. Fully free from material desires. You go on, you go on. We have now, we are polishing this brass ornaments in our doors and it's difficult. First time you touch, nothing is happening. Then panic. Prabhu, it's not going. Go on pushing. Just go on. Don't worry. It will go on. So you can see, you know, two minutes, three minutes, five minutes, ten, 15 minutes, then shining. No? But tiny, tiny, small piece of brass takes 15 minutes to shine. 
What about our heart, which is for millions of lifetime concreted in material desires? Yeah? It takes little time to polish. Don't worry, wash pots, see, pots also, no? it takes little time, but then they shine. So like that. So we all have to get purified. When shall I engage as you, as your permanent eternal servant, and always feel joyful to have such a fitting master? Mirantaram refers to this also. Aspiration to be eternal servant of the Lord, eternally engaged. A devotee is praying to Lord, Bhavantam Evanucharan Nirantaram. When I shall be able to act 24 hours in your service, or when I shall be able to think of you 10%. That also means Nirantaram. 24 hours engaged in Krishna service and constantly think of Krishna. So that's also explained. Okay, then uh, we have so many quotes. Okay, anyway, let's do like this. We'll just read translation of shloka one time more. Now you can see the shloka is very interesting. Pramana is tat sadachara is tat abhyasai nirantaram bhodayan atmanatmanam bhaktim apyutamam labhet. No, now it's clear, no? The highest devotion is attained by slow degrees, means nirantaram, by the method of constant constant endeavor, that's Nirantaram, for self-realization, endeavor for self, with the help of scriptural evidence, tasty conduct, and perseverance in practice. Okay? So this, this is what the purport explained. Then Prema Bhakti will be achieved. Okay, I have a few more quotes, but time is really off. I will not uh, torture you. But... Uh, it's nice to discuss. Let's say Krishna willing, we may continue tomorrow. And uh, we have a few more shlokas only. I think we have a shloka 66, 66, three more shlokas of this Pancha Shloki to discuss. Thank you very much for your patience. Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Sri Brahma Samhita ki jai, Gaur Premanande.